The Coindesk Spotlight is brought to you by Nexo, the place to earn on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more. All right, our first guest is a 24-year-old who found an incubator, Spatial Labs, with the aim of building Web3 applications and hardware in the metaverse. He has the backing of music mogul Jay-Z and his fund, Marcy Venture Partners. Please join us in welcoming Idris Sandu. Welcome, Idris. Peace, peace. Thanks for having me. All right, let, let's just start off with, tell us about what your incubator is about. Yeah, for sure. So Spatial Labs uh, was a, co a company that was founded on the basis of hardware. Um, in this space that's still maturing that we know of today as the metaverse, um, what it's going to be really defined by is the hardware that's created for the software to run on. Um, and at Spatial Labs, we really take sort of this Alan K quote very seriously that Steve Jobs famously once quoted saying, people that are serious about software should make their own hardware. Um, so at Spatial Labs, um, we have a very, you know, hardware first approach to how we think about the metaverse. Um, and, you know, although the software experiences today are still being defined and are great, um, our goal is really designing the hardware that interfaces with the human interaction. So Idris, if I could just simplify that even more for the mainstream view, are you basically talking about like creating a better version of the Oculus, for example, which has a lot of room for improvement? When you say hardware, is that what you mean? Like those kind, like basically what people are using to enter the metaverse? Yes, absolutely. The different interfaces that people are using to enter the, uh, the metaverse. And we're actually taking it a step further to say, you know, the metaverse isn't just going to be, you know, some goggles that you put on your face that assist you in escaping from, from reality. Um, we're very much interested in augmented reality as well, right? So how can we take um, your reality that we feel like is already perfect and overlay different contexts um, on top of it to enhance, you know, the information that you can process in real time, in real life? Um, we want to kind of bring people together in reality using the power of augmented reality and mixed reality. Um, and even in, in some cases, VR, um, not just like, you know, strapping something to someone's head and being like, hey, this is sort of this new uh, world that we've created. Um, it's like, how can we use the power of technology to encourage more people to see the value in spending time in, in the real world? Um, Idris, let's just kind of turn to a different topic for a moment, kind of a bigger picture question. So um, you have the backing of Jay-Z, hip-hop legend Jay-Z, but there's also kind of a larger story here in that we have a lot of hip-hop artists getting into the crypto space in various forms. Some are investors, some are creating NFTs, and I'm just curious, like, is there any overlap or connection between crypto and hip-hop, like, philosophically or thematically? I'm just, I was just thinking about this, and I'm just curious what your take is. Absolutely. I think hip-hop was initially you know, created on the basis of, you know, decentralization, if you really think about it, it was, it, it's in itself, it's a startup, right? Um, so you think about being able to take an already existing, you know, thing that existed and being able to, you know, pretty much create these different, you know, inflection points within it um, to be able to, you know, uh, create, create a new culture. Um, and I think what we've seen is um, within hip hop, you know, um, people of color are often, you know, um, the, we're segmented to be in sort of the consumers and not the creators of that switch to be consumed. So, um, you know, the spending power is incredibly high, but when it comes to, you know, production, our production rate is very low. So we consume more than we create. Um, and I think hip hop in and of itself um, has, you know, created so much value um, today in the world. But if you kind of think about, you know, where that value is created, it's on platforms that weren't really created by people that come from within hip hop. So, you know, we, we, we now sit within a state where we're like, all right, well, how can we make sure that the next NPC or the next microphone or the next, you know, um, AR, VR device that's going to, you know, be propelled by hip hop in of itself um, sort of gets to sit within a space where the people that are creating it and understand the value that can be created by utilizing sort of the hardware um, get to also create the companies. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it just, just reflecting on Black History Month, you know, um, I was wondering if you could reflect on the state of diversity in crypto right now. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because um, as somebody that's been in the tech space for, for nearly almost a decade now, um, something I realize is, you know, although we say diversity is what we're looking for, we're actually looking for representation. Um, I liken diversity to being, you know, taking a, a specific variation of a plant and just asking for that plant or that tree to have a different color, right? Um, sometimes the roots are 
you know, fractalize and we have to change the roots, not the actual color of it's like having a house that's like, you know, uh, doesn't have specific, you know, structural integrity and then just changing the color. So I think for us, it's really about representation. What I'm what I'm looking for in tech um, is representation, um, not just, you know, we need more people that look like this doing the same thing, but to really show people like technology is still at it. I mean, this mainstream technology is still at its infancy. We're barely, you know, at the tip of the iceberg. There's so many different innovative use cases and applications of technology that we haven't seen yet. And through the lens of hip hop, you know, we can see a very, very impactful sort of ecosystem generated from it when the people that are within hip hop, the people that are within culture um, assist in building the tools rather than just using the tools that were created for them. Interesting. I mean, the, the interesting thing with what you're saying is this, is that so you're you're 24 years old and you you said you were in the business now for almost a decade. You've been consulting with large companies since you were a kid, since before you could drive. Now you have new investors coming in who might not come from the tech space. So what kind of pressure do you face um, in dealing with new investors to the space? Um, and what kind of pressures do they put on you uh, either for their return on their investment or, or what they want to see you produce? And how is it different from the usual tech crowd that, that you were used to working with before? Yeah, 1000 percent. I think, you know, for me, um, what attracts investors um, and partners to, to what I do is my hardware first approach. Um, I think a lot of people in this space have been limited to the bandwidth of information related to software. So majority of people are building software companies. Um, I think my narrative around this conversation in tech is really um, around hardware first approach. Um, we have more leverage, leverageability by focusing on the hardware. Um, and being able to create, you know, software experiences around that hardware that other people can build on top of. I mean, it's the same thing that, you know, a lot of um, large companies do today. It's just we haven't been included in those conversations. So I think as it relates to investor relations and partners, um, you know, uh, I, I generally feel very trusted, um, you know, with, with my investors and the partners that I work with because of the sort of the, the mission and vision that I'm on, which is, you know, hardware first approach, um, hitting critical mass with sort of the stuff that we do um, to be able to inspire a whole new generation to know the possibilities that, oh, it's not just about I could build this really cool app on the iPhone, but I can, in fact, invent the iPhone in of itself. So speaking of the hardware, where are you manufacturing or where are you planning to manufacture? Um, and are you seeing any hiccups at the moment because of the pandemic and, and what have you? Yeah, so um, in other spaces, you know, we're experiencing sh chip shortages and production delays. Um, I'm proud to say that we're actually manufacturing in the States. Um, our first product is going to uh, be manufactured in the United States, um, which, you know, I think is is very great, especially for, um, you know, a, a Gen Z or to really show other Gen Z is that it is possible to, you know, manufacture technology out here. And the way that we're doing it is, um, yeah, um, where, where yeah we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be sharing more in, in, into that um, as we, you know, we approach launch date. Um, but one of the first product that we're actually launching through Spatial Labs is hardware. Um, and it's a, you know, play on words of the word hardware in of itself. Um, we spell it H-A-R-D-W-E-A-R, -E um, which kind of hints as to what kind of technology it is. Um, so we really look forward to sharing more within the coming months.